Hello and welcome! In this short video, I will demonstrate what happens to a Smart Call Home Alert after it leaves your device. Where does it go and what happens next? Smart Call Home is a valuable support feature included with your SmartNet contract. Hopefully, you have already watched the first Smart Call Home video about how to configure and register your devices. If not, here's the link. Now let's take a quick look at the path that a Smart Call Home Alert takes. First, the device performs proactive diagnostics on itself and determines that something is wrong. The alert is passed on to the Diagnostics and Parsing Engine, which pulls the log files and show commands that an engineer may need to understand what's going on with the device. It draws on the intellectual capital resident in the Smart Call Home Library and applies it to the alert, then heads for the Remediation Recommendation Engine. Here's where remediation instructions get attached to the alert. Then the customer is notified, attack case is opened if needed, and the alert is sent to the Smart Call Home portal, where it's available to the customer and the TAC engineer. Remember that during the configuration of Smart Call Home on your device, you used an email address. When an alert is raised, Smart Call Home sends an email to that address. This email has two important links, one to the message details on the Smart Call Home portal, and one to the service request if one was opened. At this point, you might be asking, do all Smart Call Home Alerts send a customer notification or open attack service request? The answer is no. To find out which alerts send notifications or open service requests with the Cisco TAC, check the Smart Call Home Monitoring Details document by browsing to cisco.com slash go slash smartcallhome. Now back to the email. In this example, a service request was raised with TAC. Click on the first link to take a look at the message details in the Smart Call Home portal. From here, you can look at the output from the device, view the details of the alert, and view the recommended actions to take. You can also click the link to the service request if one was opened. In this case, a service request with the TAC was opened, so let's take a look. At the top of the service request, you can click on a link to take you to various information in the service request. You can also close the service request. As the TAC engineer works the service request, you will see their notes and have full visibility into what's happening with your issue. The engineer may recommend configuration changes or any variety of remediations, or the device might need to be replaced. If the TAC engineer has determined this to be the case, he or she will open a Return Materials Authorization, or RMA. If an RMA is needed, you will see a linked RMA number appear in your service request. You can click on that link to view information about your RMA. Your replacement part will be shipped to arrive in accordance with your service level. Once your replacement is received, return the part or device back to Cisco. In this example, the part is shipped to one of our depots in California, but depending on your location, it could be shipped to any of our warehouse depot locations worldwide. Once you have your replacement part, the service request is closed. There are a lot of resources on our website that you can use to help you with Smart Call Home and other Cisco products. Our Cisco support community is a great place to start for technical discussions and problem solving. Our Ask the Experts video blogs and support forums are especially helpful. For more information about the Cisco SmartNet service and Smart Call Home, please contact your Cisco service representative.